Hey guys, it's Andy. I'm glad to be with you again this week as we continue our series of God Time devotionals going through the book of Mark. I think that for us to understand our passage today, we need to understand that in verse 1, Jesus is in the region of Judea. And this is important because earlier in the book of Mark, we met the man who was the king of this region. This king had gone through a very public divorce and it had aroused a great deal of attention, especially from a prophet who had come before Jesus. Of course, I'm speaking of John the Baptist, who had confronted Herod Antipas and his wife Herodias and told them that what they had done was not lawful. As we saw in Mark chapter 6, John's teachings about divorce had directly led to him being beheaded. This is why the Pharisees were trying to test Jesus, or as some translations describe it, they were trying to trap Jesus. John the Baptist had been extremely popular with the people, and the Pharisees wanted to put Jesus in an impossible situation. Either he would affirm John the Baptist's teachings about divorce, and thus risk suffering the same fate John had suffered at the hands of Herod Antipas. Remember, in Mark 6.16, Herod Antipas actually thought that Jesus might have been John the Baptist raised from the dead. Or... He, Jesus would break with John the Baptist's teachings about divorce, saving his own skin, but at the same time making him look weak in the eyes of all the people, and thus he would lose favor with them. So the Pharisees thought Jesus is trapped. He's either going to anger Herod or anger the crowds. No matter what Jesus said, he was going to be in trouble. But ultimately, Jesus beat the Pharisees at their own game by reminding them that although Moses had permitted divorce, it was only a concession because the people had hard hearts. Divorce was not part of God's original plan. Well, kind of moving into the present day, I think that just as it was in Jesus' day, the topic of divorce and remarriage is still a controversial one. In American society, divorce has become relatively normalized. A broken marriage is viewed as a sad but relatively commonplace occurrence. However, within the church, divorce is still viewed as a fairly serious sin. Many churches don't allow people who have been divorced to serve as pastors or elders. This attitude has led some people who have been divorced to feel like they are wearing a kind of scarlet letter that singles them out. Now, on the one hand, this sort of singling out of a specific sin is clearly wrong. None of us are without sin, and it is wrong for any of us to hold up other people's sins and say that they are worse than the ones that we struggle with. But we do have to deal with the fact that in the Old Testament, the prophet Malachi said, God hates divorce. Now that verse in Malachi 2.16, I just want to be clear, that's not the only time God singles out a sin in the Old Testament. If you just want another example of that, you can think of uh, Proverbs 6.16 6, through 19, and, and that's another place where God lists some specific sins that he especially hates. But here's the thing. If God hates divorce, then as followers of God, shouldn't we hate divorce too? Now, my answer to that question is, of course. And yet, there is more to it than that. It has been my experience that God isn't the only one who hates divorce. Most divorced people that I know hate divorce. They hate what it does to their children, to their extended families, and even to their own ability to be in future relationships. Divorce is a serious sin because it is such a deeply personal issue that impacts how we see and experience the world around us. How we see ourselves, how we see other people, how we even see God. Because isn't he the one who joined us together in marriage in the first place? So the question is, what should we do about how we treat divorced people in the church? Now, I, I, I recognize that uh, when it comes to uh, specific passages in, in, in the Bible and the New Testament, there, there could be a good case for uh, why certain sins need to be treated differently, especially when it comes to uh, people who are going to be elders and, and pastors in the church. But, but more broadly, I think the key to answering this question of how we should treat divorced people is that we need to recognize the truth of what Jesus was talking about in verse 5 when he said that the people of Israel had hard hearts. We still struggle with hard hearts today. In fact, it is because of our hard hearts that we get divorced, but it is also because of our hard hearts that we stand in judgment of those who struggle with a sin that perhaps we haven't struggled with ourselves. All of us, inside the church and outside the church, we all have hard hearts, and it is leading all of us to a place of destruction. Now, we can't do anything about this problem of the sin of our hard hearts on our own. Our only hope is to place our trust in the promise that God sent to us through the Old Testament prophet Ezekiel. He said, uh, God said through him, 
I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. Jesus is the fulfillment of God's promise. He is the one who forgives us of all of our sins and turns our hard hearts into something new, something soft that he can use for his glory. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I want to pray right now for those uh, who, who might be watching who have been through a divorce. And Lord, I, I pray that you would just reveal your love to them, that you have plans for them, uh, as it says in Jeremiah, plans to prosper them and not to harm them, to give them a hope and a future. Lord, I, I, I just ask that you would encourage them today to recognize that in the church, they are not a second class citizen and, and that you have a, a future for them uh, where they're going to be able to bring you glory, that, 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 you, that, that you love them and, and you are concerned about what's going on, not just uh, to, to view them through the prism of their divorce, but to view them for the prism of what your son accomplished on the cross, to forgive them of their sin and to bring them into a new place of righteousness. And at the same time, Lord, for those who might have a judgmental spirit or, or are just struggling with these kinds of uh, questions, Lord, we want to see people and, and to see others not through the lens of their sin or, or our sin or our, our judgmental spirit, but we want to see people, Father, the way that you see them, through the lens of your son, Jesus. And so, God, I just pray that you would give us a, a heart of grace and a heart of love. Take away our hard hearts and give us soft hearts that you can use. We pray all these things, Jesus, in your precious name. Amen. All right, guys, it was good to be with you today. We'll see you tomorrow.